Hello, I'm back. Mimsy here. I am going to start working on the background of the number six cat. And I was kind of smart, I think, and I made copies of the one I did. So I have three or four that I can actually do. So I'm kind of excited because I can show you several different ways to do background and explain things on the background. So I'm kind of excited today about that, uh, which will give us a little bit of background on um, proportions and uh, perspective and we'll, we'll just do all kinds of different things on that so you can kind of see what what works best for you or what you like the best and that's my cat <laughs> they've been fed though but they, they still wants me to pet him uh, but we were going to get started with the number six cat background yay so we're back and this is the cat we drew in the number six cat video and I made photocopies of it but the actual size of it was this size right here so you can see there's a line so this is actually where our paper was it was about here and it was about it, it went that way and then this was here so you can kind of judge by that I, I, I it's on eight and a half by eleven regular uh, paper because that's what I had in the the thing but um we look at it let's look at it as this is the paper I know this is on the edge but try not to think of that as part of the thing we could I mean I can expand past that and just use the line as something else if we want to try I guess we could do that uh, depends on you you go off the edge of your paper anyway no matter what you do in other words what we're going to do first is we're going to think about the room. If we're going to put it in a room, I'm going to do one where I want to put it on a chair. It's all curled up and it looks like it could be on a chair. And it would be really cool to do that. So we're going to start by making the seam of the chair where it's, it's going to have its head kind of on the seam of the chair. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to draw a line out at a slant at an angle. And then I'm going to come back. So I don't know what kind of chair you want to draw. We can draw any kind of chair, actually. This line is actually the bot, the base of the chair, and it's going to go all the way to here, but you're not going to see it because it's behind the cat. And then it's going to come like this because it's like a, a gigantic uh, rectangle. So lightly, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to draw a rectangle shape. It's going to go this way, and it's going to go that way. This is the base of the chair. The back of the chair is going to come up from there. It's going to come up like this. Now, we could do a fancy swirl here and make it a real fancy chair, but I'm just going to do a regular back. So I'm going to come up with a line that's just going to go straight up. And then the other corner would have been right here. You see how the rectangle goes like this? I have to pretend that it's behind there. So I lift my pen. I go to there. And now I know this is where the other part of the back is going to go. So here goes the back. I'm going to go off the page. Now, if my paper was still cut there, it would look a little different, but it would still look close to the same. And then this is going to be, it's going to be thick. So I'm going to make it thick. And this one's going to be a piece of wood, but we're going to draw some slats. So I, this can be solid because the slats are not going to show, but the, the slats are going to show there when you look at a chair to get it correct so this is what we have so far now for the chair I can go down here for the legs which would just be like straight down and and this could be a base so I will draw a parallel line to the line above it and I'll come down with a little line here so basically I'm making almost like a box there's going to be another line coming down here. This was the one we had drawn before. And now I'm going to draw that line. So now we have a chair. We don't have, we need a leg down here. So I'm going to have to draw one this way and one this way. And it's going to have to have a line there because it's actually a whole peg. This chair would just, would be that, but we'd also have a piece back here. Since we're going off the paper, we don't have to worry about the angle that you'd have to make it at the bottom. But there is a way to do that. This leg over here is going to go straight down. 
And now you can kind of see that there's a chair underneath the cat. The cat's sitting on a chair. Now we can do whatever we want to with this chair. We can make it sit on a cushiony chair. It can be a ladder back chair. Uh, I think I'm going to do a cushiony chair. I think that would probably be the easiest thing to show you. So this is probably a wood leg. This is more than likely a cushion. And I think I'm going to make it have um, a cushion that has, um, I don't even know what you call them. They're like a button. And then they kind of come out like this. They almost look like these are spiders, but they're not. But it makes a cushion in the chair. I cannot think of what these are called right now. Why, I don't know. But I can add a few of these around the... the uh, And what these lines do is it makes it look like they're, it's cushiony. It makes it look like the cushion. Tufted. I think it's called tuft. Tuft. A tuft. And I'm going to do a half one here. Because underneath him is some of these things. And so I'm going to do a half. Okay, so there is my cushion on my chair. I could make this gathered. I mean... Gathers would not be that difficult either. You could just kind of wiggle your edge a little bit by the by the edge of the seat. And you could kind of pull it down a little bit, partially. And do the same at the bottom if you wanted to and kind of come up. Doesn't have to be even in the same way. And that would make it look gathered. Like a gathered material. Doesn't necessarily have to be like that either, though. You could do... Something completely different. But I think that's cute looking. So I think I'll finish the edge here. I might do something different on this edge. Just to show you a different thing for a chair. And the more you curve them, the more fluffier or the bigger they look. Like uh, the gathers might be wider. See how it makes it start to look like it's poking out? These look like they're just going straight up and down. But this makes it look like it's going a lot wider. And then we could put the same tufts up here. We can do a couple of buttons. There might be a button behind the ear, one back here, and then we just kind of make it look the same. It's best not to go into the button like I did there. It kind of ruins the pattern. You just go to the edge of the circle. And kind of come out at all angles like a spider would almost be in a way. And then so this is some tufted material. You could add some more fluffy looking fluffs around it if you want to. And that's one way we could do the chair. Now this chair is in a room. More than likely it could be up against a wall. It could be it could be wherever but we're going to put it in a room and anytime you have there's something that's called a horizon line and a horizon line is where the sky meets the earth or where the uh, sky meets the sea or something outside but when you're inside there's also horizon lines believe it or not and there's several of them you could give a perspective of being way taller than this cat way taller and looking down at the cat and you could have the ceiling line below or you could have the the floor line be super down here which would actually be like you're above it also but you could also do the floor line way to the back which makes the room look huge so i think that's what we're going to try to do um we're going to and it's easier to do a, a straight line if you slant your paper so i'm going to slant this and draw a line this will be my horizon line to the back and this is going to be represent my line. So you see I'm lifting my pen because I know I have to go back through here. Okay, so there's a line. This line right here is going to represent a wall. And on my wall, I could even put like another line to make it look like it's got... Um, the uh, Not Wayne's coating, but the... Um, 
stuff at the bottom. I can't think of that right now. Anyway, you've got the line for your, your thing. And so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some things to it. So let's pretend it's in a room that has a door back here. We're going to put the door. Now, the, this is a pretty big room. So this door is kind of back, way back here. We're going to put a fancy little dealy on the... And maybe it has a uh, rainbow window thing on the door. Way back in the back. So you see it gives a perspective that this cat's way up front, in front of the actual painting that you're doing or picture that you're doing. And this room is way to the back. So we could even put another uh, um, a window here on this wall that we made. Oops, sorry. I know I'm bouncing a little bit more than I did the last video. I have a different mount on my neck, and I think it's not working as well. It's hard for me to see up here. But anyway, this would be a window. So I'm going to make it a, it's a pretty big window. So it's going to be a double window. And I think I'm just going to have the thing go across here on each of the windows. Now, I have to, I can put the, the wood that goes around it. And you do these little triangle because this is how that, this is how you would frame be a frame around the window okay and then you would also have maybe some curtains so you could put some curtains coming down here maybe just some shears or something I don't know we're just gonna do some scribble stuff here because really it doesn't have to have any curtains but you could put curtains and we're just gonna put some quick curtains in here okay and that's our window by the door. Um, on this side of the chair, we could put maybe a chest or some kind of table. So what we would do is we'd want the perspective similar to this, but we're looking straight at it. This chair is at an angle. So this is going to look a little different. In other words, you put the base and then you would actually, it would come out at you like this. Oh, are you, I don't even think y'all could see that. Sorry. I was not in the right place. So you'd this is the, the top base, and then it would kind of come out a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of make a curvy thing. And then I'm going to bring it down like this. And then I'm going to kind of follow the same curvy thing. Now, if you were in pencil, you could erase the stuff behind it. I'm doing it in strict pen just so you can see it really well. So I'm just going to disregard some of the lines that are there, but... Anyway, I could put my little, whatever, holder things, that the little drawer pulls. The drawer pulls could go right here. And I think I'm going to put some feet on it. And this could be like a little, I don't know, something that's just on the wall. Piece of furniture that goes against the wall. And I think I'm going to put maybe... Um, Maybe a big vase. What about that? A vase. Now, this line would have to be erased, but we're going to do this so it doesn't show us bad. And then we're going to put some flowers, some kind of, some kind of droopy flowers, I think. Some leafy flowers. Maybe a couple of rose-looking things. Coming out. And a couple of these leafy things again on this side. It's all up to you on what you want to put in your house. So you don't have to do this. I want you to use your imagination and draw whatever you want to. But I'm just showing you ways that you can make things look distant. So you have some perspective. So now you can see that your cat is um i don't know it, it's it's got a lot more to it now of course this line should not be here that was from my paper that was my paper line when i went to make a copy but at least it kind of gives you a little bit more perspective i think i'm going to put a rug underneath here so i just need a line that kind of goes like this and goes like this and then i'm going to make some kind of pattern on it like i'm going to kind of come out with some patterny things 
Now, why am I doing this in the middle? Because in the middle would be where the pattern is. And it's going to almost fall, make an ellipse. It's not going to make, like, if you were to just draw a, a rug that was completely oval. And I could put some stripes or something on there. I don't know. I'll just do some stripes, I guess. To make it kind of look like a rug. This is just one way you can do this. You could do all kinds of stuff with your cat, your house, your thing. So I don't, this looks good, but this doesn't look right. So I don't, I think we're just going to come back and maybe I'm going to put like a little pattern here. Just to give it some kind of maybe look better. That's just a little pattern. And that's basically it. You can, you can do shading and shadowing, which we would be a whole other video. But I'm going to show you another way you can draw just the cat and do um, the cat on just on maybe a rug. So if the cat's in a room and we want it on a rug, a rug would not look, okay, a rug might be a round rug. It might be an oval rug, but it's not going to look like a complete oval. It's going to be more of an ellipse. And that's because of the way you're looking at it. When you look down at the cat. So if you look at a cup, and I'll show you, I'll use this as an example. When you look at this straight on, you see a circle. But when you start to tilt it and you start to look at it at a different angle, the circle, which you know is a circle, is now an ellipse. You see the ellipse shape here? You're seeing an ellipse. And that is what you want to draw because you're seeing the cat from the side. You're not looking straight down at the cat. If you were looking straight down at the cat, it wouldn't look like this. You're looking at it from the side. So you want to take a, a shape that's like this and you want to turn it to where it's an ellipse. This is an ellipse. This is how you draw all kinds of basic shapes too, like cylinders and things of that nature. You would be using that as part of your uh, what you're doing with it. So for this cat, we're going to draw an ellipse. So there is a rug back here, and it's going to go like this, and it's going to come around, and it's going to come like this. So it's like a it's like an oval, but it's it's a little bit tighter. So it's more like an ellipse. And we're going to, we can put anything we want on the rug. Um, on the last one we did stripes. So I guess on this one we can maybe put flowers or something. But even the flowers are going to be more sideways and not like if you do the day, the, the, the stems of things are going to be more sideways. Because if you're looking straight down at it, it might look different than if you're looking at like at the side. But it really doesn't matter. You can put any kind of pattern you want to put. Because it is a rug. And, you know, you can draw these leaves, which are just basically um, an almond shape, like you did the eyes. You go out and come back, and then you can add a stem. Maybe do some swirls in here. That's kind of cool. Because it might be a cool rug if you have some swirls. Now remember, the cat's on top of the rug too, so some of the stuff might come out of the, from the behind him, looking like it was, um, different. So I think I'll put another flower here. Oh, and then maybe another swirl here. And another leaf pattern here. So there's a rug under our cat. Now, do we want to do it like this cat and have a room that's way far back where you can put stuff in it? That's really up to you. He didn't even have to be in anything. You could just leave it just like this. And you could paint it or color it or leave it black and white. But you'd have a cat on a rug. Uh, if you wanted to, you could add, you could do something else like even make it... Uh, where it's sitting by um, the wall. So this rug would be right up against the wall. 
So here's our wall. I think I drew that wrong. Um, this is in front of my eyes, so it's very hard for me to see sometimes. I think I'm doing it correctly. <laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm looking through the camera, but I'm also looking through. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I think I can see now. So we're going to say that it is close to, let's see, maybe a window. We're going to put it by a window. There, the cat likes the window. So I wouldn't do it dead center of my drawing because it just doesn't look interesting. So I would probably start the window here and go that way. So this is going to be my window. And this is going to be the edge. Which is basically just a, another line by the line. And then it's got a little, another ledge to it. And this is the windowsill. So even you could do, like you could split this in half. Oh, you can't see that. I am so sorry. Okay. It is, yeah, there. I don't, that's what I drew above the cat. Um, it almost goes off the paper here, but it's got quite a bit of paper right here. That makes things more interesting if you don't cut the lines off right in the middle when you're drawing stuff. Like, I could have drawn a, a, the window here and gone over, but that would have cut it completely off, and you kind of don't want that when you're doing uh, pictures and stuff. So, this is just giving you an example. So, in other words, I might come down here, and I might put panes through here. Just some panes and then actually we could even look outside there could be a tree or maybe bushes by the window and you could put flowers in the bushes some kind of flowers maybe roses or I don't know something simple these are outside and that's your basic outside uh, the window cat with the cat on the rug and you could put you know what else would be cute we could do here would be do another ellipse and another ellipse and make him have some bowls of food let him have a bowl you could write the cat's name on the bowl you could put cat food in the bowl you could put water in the bowl could put a uh, fish head looking thing in a bowl. Maybe a dead fish. <laughs> like the bones. You know, because they always put that on the little cat's dishes. You could just put like, what would, what do you want to call this cat? Let's see. We could call this cat... Well, she's got a daisy in her hair. Let's call her Daisy. We'll make it a girl named Daisy. I like Daisy. Daisy. So there's Daisy's food bowl and water bowl. Maybe you could even put a ball of yarn. That might be kind of cute. Let's try that. Let's put a, a toy, which would be a ball of yarn. And a ball would be a ball. And then you would do like this with maybe some more of the... Um, you have some string going this way, some string going that way, and maybe a string coming out that she played with. You could do it like that. And there is our cat, Daisy, with her bowl and her ball on a rug. So now you have two ways you could do this. Um, the third way, I'm going to do it outside. This cat is outside. This cat has decided it was taken a nap by a tree. So there's a big tree right here. And I'm just going to draw some, you know, this is the tree. I don't know if you can see the lines, but that's the tree. Oh, this thing bouncing is going to drive me crazy. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to have to get that. I don't know how I can get that steadier. I don't know why it didn't bounce the first time. I may have done it differently. I don't remember. Anyway, this is a tree. So, she's kind of leaning up against the tree. And this is the, the um, 
where the roots are going to come out. So I'm going to kind of come in and out with some, I don't know what you call it, triangular looking things. They look like triangles. That's the roots. So we're going to kind of come in and out with some roots. And we're going to put some foliage, which will just be up and down, up and down. That makes a plant. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. That's a plant. Um, you can do all kinds of plants here. You can have a fern. Ferns are really cool to make. So you come out like this, and you could just do like this. And it makes it look like ferns. You could add more. You don't have to. You can. You can add more there. You could put um, other flowers coming out. Or some kind of flower that has just, just that. If you just take your pen and just do like, remember how we did the whiskers? Where you push them or pull them and then you're lifting? It gives it a very feathery look. So this could be some other kind of plant that grows like that. With some little, some little flowers on it. There's so many ways to do this that it would be, it, there's a bazillion. So, on our tree, to make it look more like even a tree, I'm going to add what I call bark looking stuff. So, I might even come up here and I might make a little swirl like that because that makes it look like maybe there was a limb there at one time when it was smaller and they cut it off. And then I'm just going to follow the lines of the, of the, um, roots but just a few you just kind of alter the lines nature has patterns that are random they're so random they actually make a pattern but it's so random to the eye that it's hard to tell what the pattern is so even like here when we're going to come down we're going to maybe come down with some of the this bark and the bark can just be some squiggly lines, but they, they all kind of go in the same direction. They flow in the same direction. She's probably going to be laying close to one of the roots with her paws on the roots. This looks like a big knot. So I'm going to make that a knot. And what you do for knots is you can go around them and then come back. Because that makes it look like a tree too. So just some random, you know lines and just random and then we're going to put a big plant back here because i think it needs something so i don't know you know what i'm going to make an iris i like irises so i'm going to come out with a stem and an iris has three petals so we're going to do they come down like a, they like this and they go one and you do two and then you can do three, can come from the back. And then it has three little things that come up. And then you have the little stem things or whatever like that. That's a pretty iris. And then their stems also come out and they branch off. The stems of the iris. And they have little buds that are like this. And they're foliage is definitely just like kind of pointy so she has an iris growing by her that she's ended up laying by and now we're going to put the background so back behind here I need my horizon line so I have to decide where my horizon line is going I, I'm going to put it kind of back where it's kind of far and it's going through the this. You it might come through. You might see it there, and you'll probably see it once it passes this tree, unless there's some bushes or something here. But we'll just go ahead and do that. So there's my horizon line. Now I can do a lot with that. I can make it look way far away, and this be a field where it's just one tree and there's nothing else there, or I can make it look really close up by putting some bushes and other stuff. I could even do like a house if I wanted to. Like maybe she's way away from the house. Maybe she went to this tree. Because it's just way out in the, you know, yard. So we could put maybe the house back here. 
So a house would just be a rectangle. You could build on this house. There's a rectangle. There's your triangle roof. But you could also build out. You could come out and make another rectangle and have another roof coming off of that. You could come with another roof coming this way and coming back and then have another part of the house. You could even have a bigger roof in the back where it's a really big house like this and then it comes to the side down here okay so and the, this could be different things you might want a window here we don't know we don't know what the house looks like this could be the doorway maybe maybe it's the door or a gate that goes into this big house i don't know houses are interesting we're going to draw a castle and i'll show you it's very easy to draw houses but once you learn, because it's just basic shapes, you just redo in the shapes. And you could add roofing materials to this to make the roofs look more, you know, whatever. But she's away from the house because she really wanted to just get away from it all. And we're going to put some bushes in front of this house. And probably a driveway. So here's the driveway. The driveway is going to... Now, driveways are funny because to make them look like a driveway and not look like a tree. If you just put straight lines coming down, it does not look right. You, it has to... It has to be smaller where you start, and it has to get wider as you go. That's part of perspective. So I'm going to start here because I'm going to say this is maybe the garage back here. And so the, 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 the driveway is going to come like that from the house. It gets that way. And so really the driveway would probably be coming almost to her, coming out here past where she is by the tree. That's cool. And then we can put maybe another tree here. Another smaller tree that goes like this. Um, like a regular, like almost like a pine tree. Where it's going to go to and behind the, the um, big tree that's here. It's going to come down and it's going to come a little bit out here. Once I get t down that, that low. And then... Um, I can put the, the main stem down here. So it's a little past the horizon line, I guess. And that's cool. And then back here on this side, we might go ahead and put, make it kind of distancey. So these would be like little tree silhouettes. Because this could be like a field. So these are little tree silhouettes. So. Not a whole lot going on back there. But as you can see, it makes it look like there's depth now to the piece. Of course, you you know, have to add more shadow and shading. And down here, I'm going to add a few little things like to the bottom of this to make it look a little bit more. If we come out and add some little pebble things, that's going to kind of look cool too. You know, like just like it's got some rocks here and there. Maybe some more grass here. Not much, but just maybe some grass. Maybe even some grass here. You could actually even do... This is how I do grass if I'm going to make just like some little tufts coming out. You know, like this whole thing could be grass, but just maybe some tufts. And probably even that on the, on the edge of the driveway. You know, you'd probably have some grass coming up here I don't know how um anyway that would look good and then that that's another background that we have um you have your your house now we, here's another thing we could do there is a way to make it look like there's a pathway and it's and what it what you do is you start at the door and you're going to come out and you're going to come around and go like that and you're going to start here at the door, and then you're going to come out and go wider. So you're going wider at the base, and then you might want to put something here, like, I don't know, some rocks and maybe some more landscape stuff. You know, it might not just be the tree. They might have other things in their yard with their little sidewalk going to the house. So there is your third one. So we had this, this one. 
we had the one with the the uh, inside of the house where the big window and they were on uh, right, we named her Daisy and she is on her um, on her rug with her ball and her her food bowls and stuff and then we have the one that it's sitting in a chair a tufted chair and way back there and you know what I don't like this line right here is really driving me crazy so we want to kind of do some something right there just to make it look like it goes across but um, this line should not be here this should have been erased remember because this was the original because of the size of this so just remember that this line would not be here that makes it look kind of funny I don't know but anyway uh, you get the drift of what you would do with the chair, and you get the drift of what you would do with the, if it was on just a rug, and also if it was outside. And that just gives you three ways that you could do this number six cat and, and have a background. And we will work on probably, now this was done in pen for me, but if you did yours in pencil and you got it the way you wanted it, or even if you didn't have it the way you want it and you want to just redraw it and draw it the way you want it. When you get your finished piece, I suggest you take a pen. It doesn't have to be a, an ink pen like this. It can be a permanent marker, a very fine permanent marker, and trace your lines. Just because at this stage, if you're new to this, now if you have already drawn things before and you've painted and you know how to do it, where it'll make it come out, that's great. If not, this is the best way to make your work show up, is to already have all your lines traced before you do any color. Okay, I'm back and I am so uh, glad y'all stayed with me to do the uh, cat. So this is what we ended up with was three of them. One being on the It's really the a rug, cushion, not a and cushion. The other one's being on a cushion chair and then there was a third one in, outside. Anyway, those three are going to be the, the subject probably of one of the other videos on which I'll show you a little bit about color. You'll enjoy that, I think. I hope so. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, it was what you liked uh, to do. And if you did like it, please hit the like button. Like they always say, I don't exactly know why that does. But if you like this, hit the like button or whatever. Comment. Give me a comment about something I can do better. I know. The quality of these are going to have to get a little better. <laughs> and I'm going to try again. I don't know why. I'm just having such issue with it. But it's okay. I will eventually get these. <laughs> and they'll all be connected. Because really the first part of this, me talking, should have been then the... And hopefully maybe we'll get this one right. I don't know. We will try. I will try. I am still trying. <laughs> It's a journey into imagination. So wishing you much love, joy, and peace. And um, just remember, you'll always be a part of Mimsy's heart. <laughs>